All right, next up we have our kinematic equations. These are going to be your primary tools during the kinematics unit, and these will be used all year. All year, even in e &M, all year, you're going to be coming back to these. All right, so these are sometimes called the big four. The reason why there's four of them. These are the equations we're going to use. The first one is the change in velocity equation. It states that acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change of time. That's the definition of acceleration. But in this case, we actually write it a little bit differently, uh, just for historic reasons. This one is the final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times the time. This one states the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. Acceleration is how many meters per second the speed changes each second. So if the speed is changing by three meters per second each second times seven seconds, that would be 21 meters per second of change plus whatever the initial is, that's what the final is going to be. This just tells you how the velocity changes as a function of time. Next up is the 1 half at squared equation. This is one that is used, this is probably the most commonly used one. This is sometimes just called the equation of motion, but uh, I call it the 1 half at squared equation, and I think it will become obvious as to why. Here we go. Delta x, the change in position, the displacement, is equal to the initial speed times the time. That would be how far it would have gone if it wasn't accelerating in that amount of time, plus 1 half at squared. This is the amount of distance that has changed because of the acceleration. We add those two together, we get the total distance traveled in a certain amount of time. Uh, that's this one. We'll look at it in a little more detail in just a minute. Uh, this is actually a slightly different way than you'll see on the AP equation sheet. I'll show you the modification for that that you'll see on the AP equation sheet. Instead, you'll see it like this. They've broken up the delta x into x final, which AP does not notate with an F, but this is x final, is equal to x naught, the initial position. So if you just subtract this to the other side, it would be x final minus x initial. That would be where that delta x came from or got off to in this case. So you'll see it like this. It's the same equation. I'm going to put it back. Next up is the v squared equation. This one is called v squared because it's got some v squareds in it. All right, so here it is. V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2A delta X. You might also see this written as D or delta Y or something else, but it's the displacement here in this case. So this one is one that's kind of hard to explain in words what exactly it means, but it has to do something with work that's being done. We'll look at where this equation comes from when we get to the energy unit. You can get it by combining these two equations together algebraically to get this one. Uh, but we're not going to derive this one right now, but we will derive that one later on. And the last one, this is one that does not show up on the AP equation sheet at all, but it's one that you can definitely use, uh, and I would encourage you to use it because this is probably the easiest equation other than this first one, um, because it's just the average velocity. It's almost the definition of what average velocity is. And here it is. It's delta x. The displacement is equal to vf, sorry, this should be plus vo. So this is the average velocity, because you just add the beginning and the final velocity and divide by 2, and then multiply by the time. This tells you the distance that some object will go, however fast it's going at the beginning and end, and take the average and multiply by t. This one's not on your equation sheet, but it's super easy to remember, so feel free to use this at any point as you go through. Now, some things I want to pay attention to here. V final, V final, we write them in here, the, the AP equation sheet does not. Um, there's some reasons for that and we'll get into that. Right, another thing to notice about these equations, they all have four variables from our kinematics set. There are five variables, each of these equations has four of the unknowns in it. As long as you know four, you can use it to find the other two. As long as you know three, you can use it to find the other two, that's what I mean to say. here. And uh, that's the, the big thing about kinematics. These equations here, however, only work if the acceleration is constant. This is a very important thing to note. Uh, if there is a changing acceleration, which we will deal with in this class, you can't use these simple equations, and you'll just have to use calculus, which we'll get to later. Uh, but this is a very, very, very important thing to note. One thing as well, if acceleration is zero, 
you'll notice that this equation just tells you the final initial velocity or constant. This one just tells you the distance is equal to v naught times t, or distance is equal to rate times time. Easy things that we know, this one as well, if you plug in zero for a, it just tells you that the square of the velocity is equal to the square of the velocity at the end. And then the average velocity here would just be equal to the velocity. So this, they all just become the same equation, which is just distance equals rate times time at that point. These are the kinematic equations. These four equations right here, you must memorize. They are on the equation sheet, but you must memorize them. It is very important that you mem memorize these because you'll be using them again throughout the entire year. If you have to flip back to the first page in your test to look up this, you're not gonna be doing very well. So these ones, these ones definitely should be memorized. Uh, in fact, you should write them down on a little piece of paper, carry it around with you. I don't know, when you're sitting in the bathroom or something, just take a look at it. Uh, or, you know, if you're on a, well, I guess right now people aren't like going from place to place. I was going to say you look at it on the bus, but I don't know, maybe if you got five minutes where you're waiting for your teacher to show up to the Zoom call, uh, stare at these and memorize them. Uh, I'm hoping that you'll have this memorized by the beginning of school year. Uh, these are very important for your success in this class. Um, I'm going to erase these now, but you should have written them down if you need to. Pause before they go away. I've also erased my name, so if you can't remember who I am, just rewind to the beginning. A uh, couple things I want to talk about here. One is uh, the way that you're going to organize work as you solve problems going forward. We're going to look at some problems using these uh, big four equations throughout the rest of the year. I'm not going to go through examples right now, uh, but you'll look into the homework to see that, uh, how that works. But the big things, just be organized with what you do. Look at the problem. Find the things you know. Write them down. Look at the equations, figure out which equation you're gonna use, write it down. Those are worth points on the test, uh, on our tests, as well as on the official AP test. And then solve the equation, plug in the numbers, get your answer, put a box around it, make things easier for whoever's grading. So just something to, t to mention there. Next up, we're gonna look at something called free fall acceleration. If you got an object and you let go of it, it happens to fall downwards. It accelerates, it changes its velocity and it goes faster and faster as it falls. Uh, this is called free fall acceleration. I think we all know that the free fall acceleration is called G, and on this planet that we love to call Earth, uh, that we live on and breathe on, it is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. Acceleration is a vector, so it has to have a direction. Downward is the direction. A lot of times you write it as negative 9.8, but it's not a negative number, it just is down, points down. Okay, that's a very important statement, especially as we get further on in the year. Um, it's called G on Earth, it's also called G on other planets, often we'll write subscripts. If you care, it's 32 feet per second squared in the units that everybody here on this, uh, in this country uses. Uh, then our last thing is looking at graphs of motion and equations of motion. So we're gonna take a look at that. We're gonna take a look at a problem and we're gonna do some graphing with this problem as well as just solving the problem. So we've got here a person throwing a ball up in the air. They start off, uh, we'll say 25 meters above the ground. They throw a ball upwards into the air at a speed of 10 meters per second at the beginning. It goes up, comes back down, it's gonna hit the ground down below. Pretty simple setup and situation. This sort of detail is what I wanna see out of you in a problem, draw a picture, label things, and uh, if you feel like it, you can, you can write these knowns and unknowns down in a more organized fashion, but this is just fine as well. Uh, this tells us that the ball goes up, comes back down 25 meters to the ground. The equation we're gonna use in this case is gonna be our 1 half at squared equation. You'll see why here in just a minute. What I'm trying to really figure out is, I guess, how long it takes for the, for the ball to hit the ground. So that's what we're looking for, and we know the displacement is gonna be 25 meters downwards, the velocity is 10 meters per second, and the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second. In this case, I'm just gonna use 10 because it's close enough and it makes the math easier. Uh, almost everything, except for when you're doing calculated problems on WebAssign, you can use 10, uh, but if you'd prefer to use 9.8, you can do that as well. So here's your equation. We've got delta x is equal to v naught t plus 1 half at squared. If you use the equation that they had on the AP physics equation sheet, you get something that looks like this. x is equal to x naught, the initial position, 
which in this case is 25 meters up in the air, plus V naught T, this is the initial speed, which is positive 10 meters per second upwards, times the time, whatever time you want to look at, plus 1 half AT squared. And this acceleration is going to be downwards, it's going to be negative 10. So this equation right here is sometimes called the equation of motion for the object because it tells you where the object is at every single second. And so what I'm going to do here is go ahead and graph this for you. Let's see, hopefully I can get a graph to pop up over here. Okay, here we go. We've got the calculator up and running. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually type this equation into my y equals menu. So I'm going to do the initial height was 25 plus the initial velocity, which is 10 times x. I'm using x because uh, calculators don't understand t's apparently. And then we're going to add 1 half at squared and 1 half a in this case is just going to be uh, negative 5 because that's 1 half of 10. So we're going to do then minus 5t squared because apparently, okay, there we go. And we're good. Let's graph that. Wonderful. Mm. All right, so I'm going to configure my window here. We've got uh, x min and max being 0 and 5. That's the beginning and end of the, that's time. x is time again, and y is going to be the height, which is x in this. So, you know, sometimes this gets a little confusing when you look at the, the variables. But now we're going to graph it, and you see this beautiful graph right here. This is a graph of the position of the object as a function of time. At the beginning, here on the left, I don't know if you can see clicks. No, it doesn't look like you can. Uh, on the left side, it starts off at a height of 25 meters. It flies upwards. So as time goes on, uh, here, let me go ahead and just trace. So you can see the equation up at the top, y1 is equal to 25 plus 10x minus that. So here we go. At time t equals zero, we get uh, that the height is 25 meters. As we keep going, you can find up to the peak here, which is right around one second is when it gets to its peak. It's at 30 uh, meters above the ground. And then it'll come back down, get back to the same height that the guy's at here at a, about two seconds later, then continues, continues, continues until we get right around here, when it goes from right above the ground to right below the ground at just about 3.45 seconds. So this is a way you can actually use solve problems graphically if you feel like doing it that way. You can always just plug the numbers in and solve for it in here as well, um, but it's an, an alternate approach that you can use to see visually what's going on in this case just using your calculator to solve a problem. This is maybe a little bit quicker for some of you. It might be not quicker for some of you as well. Um, if you'd prefer, you know, you just plug everything in and use some quadratic equation and you're done. Um, but that's about that. So using a graph in this way is, is sometimes very useful. Um, another thing to pay attention to when we looked at that graph looks something like this. Uh, this is a graph of the position as a function of time. We also will graph velocity as a function of time and acceleration as a function of time. So if we look at that, Velocity is the change in position, delta x over delta t. And that looks awfully similar to the slope formula. It's the change in x over the change in t that tells you the slope. So velocity is the slope of a position time graph. If we look at this particular example, here we have a positive small slope. So we're going to have our velocity time graph start off with a positive small value. Here at this time, the slope is zero, it's horizontal. Here, it's a negative. Here, it's even more negative. So you wind up with a velocity graph that looks something like that. And then the last thing is that acceleration is equal to delta v over delta t. These are our average equations. So it's not exactly like this, but this is just sort of a representation that we're going to use for now. And so if you were to draw the acceleration versus time graph, the slope here is negative, 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 negative. It doesn't change. It's just a negative constant. And it's actually equal to negative 9.8 or negative 10 in this example here. That's all I've got to show you for today. Uh, if you're doing any calculations for the summer uh, review assignment, 
Number two, uh, make sure you're using 9.8, not 10. Um, that's it. Good luck. If you've got any questions, uh, please send me an email. Uh, that's it. Good luck.